Hi there. Uh, let's have a question. Uh, look at uh, a question from chapter eight of your book, Callister, which is about mechanical properties of metals. Uh, as you can see in this question, it uh, tells us that we have equations 8.41a and 8.4b um, are expression for normal and shear stresses, uh, stresses as a function of the applied tensile stress and the inclination angle of plane under which these stresses are taken. Uh, this is uh, based on this figure from your book. Normal stress is applied to the specimen. We can easily find the normal stress um, on cross-sectional area, this cross-sectional area, but the main idea is that what if we are interested in the value of a stress is normal and along the direction of a plane which has an angle of theta with this cross-sectional area. And uh, the value that is defined, the equation for the value of this normal stress and this shear stress along this plane, normal stress um, normal to this plane, as this equation in which sigma is the far field stress in longitudinal direction, say here, and theta is the inclination angle between this plane and the cross sectional area. The main idea is to figure out which plane has the maximum value. Okay, so these equations are fun. Now uh, it, it asks us make a plot showing these uh, parameters in term of theta. So we're going to make a plot showing these parameters in terms of theta. And then based on that, we, we going to determine at what angle we have maximum normal stress and at what angle we have maximum shear stress. How these equations are derived is very easy. It's pretty easy if they come from the fact that if we are interested to know the value of normal stresses and shear stress along this plane, we have to uh, bear in mind that if this cross-sectional area is A, therefore this plane, which has angle of uh, theta, is A divided by cosine theta, right? And uh, then if we look at the direction normal to this plane and direction along this plane, then we can write down the equilibrium equation of force or equilibrium of force and then we can drive um, the value of sigma prime in terms of sigma and angle of theta, same tau prime in terms of sigma and theta. Uh, along sigma prime direction, we project the sigma along this direction, and over here we only have sigma prime times its area. So I can write then sigma f along direction n, say this area direction is n equal to zero, Therefore, from here, we have sigma prime time, its corresponding area, which is A divided by cosine theta. And along here, we have sigma cosine theta along this direction, acting on its plane, which is A. And then we can drive this equation, and you can work it out, drive the other equation as well. Okay, now we have these two equations. We want to determine at what angle of theta this value is maximum, at what angle of theta this shear stress is maximum. The answer is uh, um, easy and clear. The first method to determine the maximum value of these terminologies is uh, to derive this equation, to find derivative of this equation in terms of theta, like it equal to zero in order to find the external point. And the same, the derivative of this term uh, with regard to the theta equal to zero. The second method is to get help from the plot. That's what we are asked for. Yes, the first part says that do this plot, make a plot, and then determine these values from there. To do so, in order to make the plot, uh, we use uh, this website. Uh, I use thismos.com, uh, which is an online uh, graphical website. This is, is, is perfect in order to plot and make graphs uh, online. So I assume that in this equation, in this equation over here, uh, over here, uh, we drive 
sigma prime along horizontal along vertical axis and theta along horizontal axis and we assume that sigma is a unit value so we can make it very similar this equation to uh, equation of y equal to cosine square theta and y equal to sine square of theta or x yeah, sine square of theta cosine square of theta uh, I did the same thing for both curves. The red curve is cosine squared and the blue curve is sine squared. The first one is, as you can see here, is for normal stress and the second one is for shear stress. Because um, this plane over here is changing from 0 to 90 degree. So I'm going to set these values from 0 to 90 and it's very easy, pretty easy to work with this. Uh, website I've already defined these terms and uh, simply in terms of x you can play with that one say for example I can play this number with three and you see the number is changing I can also uh, make it parametric so I can make a parameter of n m and then add uh, the value of a slider say from minus 10 to 10 and you see how it's changing it's, it's beautifully um, illustrating this uh, idea Okay, over here and I'm dealing with 2x and I want to make uh, x axis changing from 0 to 90 yeah so I have everything and to make it more clear I can change this one to 1.1 just make it serve pretty well good so now I have the blue curve as the variation of normal stress the red curve as the variation of shear stress uh, as you can see over here, you find the normal stress is maximum. Sorry, I guess I, I said it by mistake. Uh, the red one is the normal stress. Normal stress. And blue one is the shear stress. As you can see in the red value, we have the maximum normal stress when the angle is zero. And if we look at this curve or this uh, shape, of course, it's obvious that if theta is equal to zero, then this value is going to be maximum, which is one. And then we have the normal value of stress along this, this plane or this cross-sectional area. But for the shear stress, the story is different. Now we have the blue curve and the maximum value is at angle of 45 uh, degree. This is the angle that we have maximum shear stress. So if theta is equal to 45 degree, Based on this plot, plot, we have the maximum shear stress. And if you are dealing with the type of material, with the type of metal, which uh, they are weak uh, under shear stress, uh, then we end up to failure along this direction. This is happening specifically for um, those uh, materials that they experience plastic deformation due to the motion of dislocation. And for motion of this location, we need shear stress. If shear stress is maximum at this point, so we might be able to observe a failure along that 45 degree of theta. So that's uh, the answer to these two questions. The maximum normal stress, the angle for maximum normal stress, and the angle for maximum shear stress.